Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the final session of this extraordinary conference, um, a most dramatic conference held here in Brazil where we have seen before our eyes um, in the courts over the last few weeks and in in the legislature, in parliament, over the last few days, action in pursuit of the elimination of corruption and other values at the heart of the rule of law, at the heart of the rule of law's values of legality and equality. What a, what a, what a scene uh, to hold a conference. Um, and uh, if those values are to be fully realized, one would wonder uh, whether they can be without continuing on the path to the rule of law uh, in respect of some of the issues that have just been raised squarely in this last session. Namely, will the means to those ends be equally rule of law compliant? in respect of wiretapping, release of information, pre-trial detention, those aspects which are very important in respect of, not only of the jurisprudence of the United States in particular, or the United Kingdom or other countries, but international, international standards of rule of law. One can understand that in the height of the moment, those aspects can be overlooked. Uh, but at the end of the day, one, the big question will be to what extent will all the rule of law values be endorsed in the fight against corruption, etc., cetera, um, in terms not only of legality and equality, but also uh, in respect of the notion of fair trials, independence of, of the judiciary, and so on. I don't want to preach to you now. I don't want to continue the discussion any further. I just want to say that uh, th this conference was not only dramatic, but it was also fulfilling, enriching, and in my view, quite outstanding. There was no weak link. There wasn't any speaker who did not come up to expectations, in my, my view. Every speaker excelled, and every chair added value and wisdom. So let me start by thanking them, those speakers and the chairs, and the audience who asked penetrating questions and uh, were wonderful to meet uh, outside of this room. So on behalf of the Bingham Center for the Rule of Law, let me thank all of you, speakers, chairs, and, uh, and, and audience uh, participants. Let me also, at the beginning, because they're usually thanked sometimes, not always at the end, those invisible people as has just been mentioned, those who we hear but not see, the interpreters. You at the back, may I thank you? I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad of that applause because I, again, I found the, the interpretation absolutely faultless. And I thank you for that. And that's very, in my experience, very, very rare in international uh, events to have that quality and that consistency of interpretation. Um, may I then thank the Jones Day Foundation for their very generous support for this conference and for the Bingham Center's Global Rule of Law Exchange in which Jones Day are our global partner. There were many members of the firm that were here today uh, yes, and yesterday and I so enjoyed meeting, but let me in particular thank you, Luis, Luis Riesgo and Marcelo Halake, who chaired the last session. Uh, it was just a privilege working with, with all of you. There are partners that we have had who could be described as partners, partners from hell, but you were partners from heaven. Uh, to a great extent because you do not see the rule of law as a public relations exercise. You live it you, 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 breathe, you breathe it. You are two true believers 
You exude it. It defines you. It, it reflects you. And uh, so we, we thank you very much, and also for the kind of uh, the way we work together. So thanks very much, Luis. Thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank an individual here, Ottavio Ferras, who spoke so brilliantly earlier, a colleague of ours in London. We happened to be in Sao Paulo, he and I, only about six or seven months ago. It wasn't that long ago. And he did me the great favor of uh, having a lunch with me and introducing me to Oscar Vieira, uh, who then agreed to collaborate on the part of FJV Sao Paulo School of Law. And that again was a collaboration from heaven because it took such a little time to put together this wonderful program, which we and Jones Day would not have been able to do, I think, without them. So I want to thank him, Oscar. Um, I also want to thank Otavio Diaz, Sheila Jimenez, Marianne Camicado, Isabella Jaggi, Ruiz Santos, uh, among, among others. Um, and, and so thank you all so much uh, for, for your collaboration. Um, I, we've already thanked uh, Arias and, and Man, Munoz for their help in putting together that original paper for, for this conference, which Jan van Seelsmit, my colleague, de delivered this morning, and I think that's a real contribution. And finally, let me thank my colleagues in the Bingham Center, some of them in London now, uh, the Deputy Director, Lawrence McNamara, who chaired a session this morning, who's put on a huge amount of work behind the scenes here. Um, I, 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 he seems he, he's done so much more than I thought and probably he thought he would have to do even while here. And of course, the hero, uh, Matt Trom, whose dogged determination and organizational flair. At the beginning, you know, when there were just a few replies to our invitations, he, 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 he didn't have much to do, didn't know quite whether it would ever happen, but he persisted. And, he, and in the end, he didn't had so much work, he didn't know where to turn. Uh, but he got us here, and a huge amount of credit goes to him. So thank you for, to, for him, too, and for all of you for this wonderfully enriching session. Thank you very much, indeed. Foi também uma grande honra e é uma honra estar aqui agora, acho que representando a Escola de Direito de São Paulo, nesse encerramento. E eu gostaria uh, apenas de, talvez, acrescentar, uma, não é um acréscimo de informação, mas é, uh, talvez, um último tópico ligado ao último painel também. Não há rule of law sem que também os direitos dos acusados sejam devidamente contemplados. E só para responder a colocação do Pedro, é, os advogados criminalistas não estão tão envolvidos na Lava Jato como os advogados não criminalistas, que têm sido acusados, por exemplo, de transferir valores a título de pagamento de propina, têm, terem feito engenharias com operações societárias que efetivamente esconderam valores, serão agora muito reveladas na, no, no, na ressaca da, do Panama Papers. Mas eu também queria... Destacar um outro papel, muito brevemente, isso também responde à pergunta do Nicolai, o aluno da GV, que colocou uma questão lá atrás. Nos superprocessos, que a gente chama, como são processos como a Lava Jato e vários outros no país, a posição de defesa geralmente fica muito debilitada, por uma conjunção de fatores, mas o principal deles, de que é uma luta muito desigual, ainda que o advogado mais empoderado, sob todos os sentidos que os senhores e as senhoras pensarem, lidar com uma equipe de, por exemplo, 44 membros do Ministério Público Federal, dezenas de agentes da Polícia Federal, ou centenas, dezenas de agentes da Receita Federal, investigando já há mais de três anos o mesmo caso, e prendendo pessoas, e imediatamente colocando esses advogados com um arsenal, diante de um arsenal probatório, que é praticamente inacessível com clientes presos, que não é pre-detention no Brasil, é detention during the trial, e no qual esses advogados têm 10, 20, às vezes me poucos meses para avaliar toneladas de gigabytes de informações, desde interceptações telefônicas, 
das quais os advogados tomam ciência pela mídia, buscas e apreensões em empresas de pote nacional. Imaginem o que é uma busca e apreensão numa empresa com 10 mil empregados. Acesso a dados eletrônicos e quebra de sigilo bancário e fiscal, não só nacionais, como de contas bancárias no exterior. Então, eu acho que não, a gente não completaria essa imagem de rule of law sem também destacar esse lado. Eu faço minhas as palavras uh, do meu antecessor e eu gostaria de agradecer a todos e destacar também o papel do Matt e do Otávio, que ficaram no dia a dia conversando conosco sobre todos os detalhes desse evento. E, então, cumprimentar também de novo o Jones Day, o Bingham Center e a Direito TV. Obrigada. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey, for all your help in making this uh, event a very successful one. Thank you uh, to the FGV uh, for all your help here. I, I'm going to make the life a bit more difficult for the translators because I'm going to change between Spanish, English, and Portuguese. Uh, no one will notice when I change between Spanish and Portuguese, uh, but uh, I, I, I will try to do that. Uh, estaba pensando en agradecer también eh, a todos, pero ya Jeffrey ya lo ha hecho por mí, a todos los participantes en este evento. Entonces, quizás había pensado en hacer un pequeño resumen de todas las ponencias que hemos hecho durante estos dos días, ¿eh? salvo que tengáis alguna cosa que hacer eh, después de dos días ya de trabajos, que creo estará todo el mundo deseando ir ya eh, para, para casa. Entonces, voy a acabar eh, con una pequeña dedicatoria, y perdón por la piada, eh, pero quiero dedicar esta conferencia a mi llamada, mi esposa, me lo, me lo fui yo, en mi filla, eh, al rescate de autoestima del pueblo brasileiro. Eh. Y, y, y pela BR 429. Muy obrigado, gracias a todos por, to, por toda su presencia.